Get ready, because today we're going to be showing you how to create your favorite mobile game animations right here in After Effects, even the ones that don't exist anymore. Hey everyone, this is Jordan, Sonduck Film. We're going to break down the steps to create any animation that you like to do, whether it's a cartoon or a recreation of your favorite mobile app. These steps will help you hit the ground running, or should I say, flying. Be sure to drop a like on this video. With that being said, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is our assets, sourcing them and preparing them. Here, I have all the different assets I'll be using to recreate this scene. The bush, buildings, and clouds are all clip art taken from various stock footage websites. The bird and pipe were simply taken from Google Image Search. For the bird, all I did was remove the background in Photoshop. Then, for the pipe, it was actually part of a larger image, but I simply masked the pipe out of the image to use it as a single asset. Now that we have all of our assets gathered, we can start creating our scene. Let's start with the background. So first, I'll create our main background by going to Layer, New, Solid. I'll set the color to a nice light blue because I want it to represent the sky, then click OK. Now I want to create a background feature that we can have repeat across the bottom of our composition to fill out the background more. Let's take the bush, cloud, and building assets we gathered and put them on our timeline. We'll use the building as the center point of this asset. Then take the bush, position it so that it covers part of the bottom of the building, now I'll duplicate that bush and then use it to cover the rest, so now we have this nice building with foliage covering it. For the cloud asset, it's much longer than what we need, so I'll position the cloud where I want it behind the feature, then select the pen tool and simply mask out the rest of the cloud until we're left with this. You can see how by using the layer list, we're able to layer out our assets. We have the bushes in the front, buildings in the middle, and clouds in the back. Now let's take this entire group of assets, duplicate them, I'm going to move them to the right beside the first group, then go to Layer, Transform, flip horizontal so that it's not exactly the same. Now that I have this feature made, I'll center it at the bottom of the composition, highlight all of the assets except for the background, pre-compose all of them, then open up that pre-comp, and then go into the composition settings. Here, I want to shrink the composition horizontally so that it closes in right at the sides of the feature because we're going to have it repeating in our main composition. To do that, I'll back out into our main composition, highlight the pre-comp that we just made, and go to Effect, Stylize, Motion Tile, then in the Effect Controls panel, increase the output width until it covers the whole screen. Now we have our background fully set up and ready to go. If you like the style of motion graphics in this video and you want a quick and easy way to add them to your projects, with a click of a button, check out our Motion Graphics Professionals Pack. All you need to do is find a motion graphic that you like and click Apply. Once it's out on the timeline, you can customize it with our easy to use control layers and in no time at all you'll have an awesome custom motion graphic for your composition. You can also use the Professionals Pack to add accent motion graphics to your project easily just like the ones we're making in this video. Check out the link in the description or visit sonduckfilm.com for more info. Next, we have our bird layer, and I did a few things to take what started as a still image and turn it into this animated asset. For our bird, we have three layers, the wing, the body of the bird, and a solid to fill in where the wing was at. All I did was take the main image of the bird, then use the pen tool to cut the wing out of it. Then I duplicated that layer, opened the masks, and inverted the mask to show the rest of the bird. To animate the wing, I made sure the anchor point was at the top of it, then I set it to a 3D layer, and animated the X rotation to have the wing rotate upward in this flapping motion. To have this animation repeat, I added a simple loop out expression with the ping pong affix to have the rotation animation go back and forth infinitely, so now we have this flapping wing. Now as I'm sure you've noticed, there's a big hole in the bird, so to fix that I added a yellow solid the same color as the bird, then I copied the mask from the wing and applied it to the yellow solid so that it would fill in that missing space. To have the solid match the style of the bird, I added a stroke by going to Layer, Layer Styles, Stroke, and to match the orange color of the bird, I added a simple gradient ramp and used the dropper tool to copy the colors. You'll also notice I took the mask and extended it inside of the bird. This was to make sure that the mask is fully filled out. You can see if I take it and pull it back, you'll start to see the holes. And now we have our flying bird asset completed and animated. Next, I'm going to quickly set up our pipe asset, and doing that is really simple. 
Here we have the pipe, but we want it to be longer so that it extends to the bottom of the screen and we have more room to move it around in our main composition. So all I need to do is duplicate the pipe, set its rotation to be 180 degrees so it flips upside down, then line it up with the original pipe. You'll see that the texture doesn't line up because we flipped it upside down, so to fix that all you need to do is highlight the layer, go up to Layer, Transform, and choose Flip Horizontal to flip it over and have the textures match. Now I'm going to highlight the layers and then pre-compose them. I'll name it to Pipe. Then I'm going to take that pre-composition and add a stroke to the entire thing just like we did earlier with the bird. And just like that we have our pipe asset completed. Now that we have all of our assets completed, we can put together our scene. The first thing we'll do is add and animate our bird. We want an up and down flying animation, so I'll set a keyframe for the position, elevate it a bit, then I'll move forward a bit on the timeline, and lower it. Then I'm going to move forward a single frame, add another keyframe, then copy the first keyframe, move forward a bit again, and paste that first keyframe down. Now we should have a basic up and down animation. To make this animation look more realistic, I'll highlight all of the keyframes, press F9 to make them easy ease, then open up the graph editor tool. We want the lowest point of the animation to act as a bounce, so what we need to do is take our curves and drag them all the way to the center so that there's a big burst of speed as it hits the lowest point of the animation. Now you can see it starts slow, then bounces up like this. Next, we need to duplicate this animation so it repeats itself for the whole composition. We can't use the leap out expression here because we're going to be changing the position later on. So highlight the keyframes, move one frame after the keyframes, then paste them back down. Highlight all of those keyframes, move one frame over, paste again, then repeat this process until the animation is at the length that you need. Then quickly we're going to repeat this entire process with the rotation. Open the rotation, set a keyframe, angle the bird to be looking up a bit, move forward, have it look down a bit, add another keyframe, move forward and then paste the first keyframe just like before. We'll highlight all the keyframes, make them easy ease, then go into the graph editor and drag the curves all the way to the center again just like last time. For the rotation, we can add a loop out expression because it's going to be the same throughout the whole composition. And now our bird has this nice and smooth flying animation. Next, we'll set up our pipes and animate them to match our bird. First, add the pipe, then change its position so that it's a bit under the bird, then duplicate the pipe, rotate it around 180 degrees, and position it so that it's a bit above the bird. Now take these two pipes and duplicate them. We want the distance between the pipes to be uniform, so I'm going to move them to the right by exactly 400 pixels in the position settings. To get the animation started, we'll create a new null object, parent all of the pipes to this null object, set a keyframe for position on the null at the start of the timeline, then move forward on the timeline until the bird is at the top of its second bounce. Now I'll take the position of the null and move it so that the bird is now in between the second set of pipes. Then I'll add a loop out expression on the position of the null, but I'm going to add the continue affix so that the pipes continue to move at this set rate. Now as we add pipes exactly 400 pixels apart, it will line up perfectly with the animation of our bird. Now that the animation is started, pre-compose all of the pipes along with the null object, Open the pre-comp, and I'm going to go into the composition settings and increase the width of our comp to be really big. The bigger you make it, the longer the animation can go on for. Now highlight all of the pipes we have so far, duplicate them, then move their position to the right until they're exactly 400 pixels from the previous set of pipes, like this. Repeat this process of duplicating and moving pipes until you have a nice long trail of them like this. Next, I'll highlight each set of pipes and change their vertical positions so that they're all offset in different positions to create a nice variety like this. When we go back to our main composition, all of the pipes will be there now, and we can take the whole pre-comp and move it to the right by 400 pixels so that the bird starts before the pipes. But now you'll notice the bird is bumping into the pipes because it just has the same animation repeated over and over. 
To fix that, what I'll do is open the keyframes for the bird, move to where it doesn't line up with a pipe, highlight both of the keyframes, then adjust its position so that it matches. Then I'll repeat this process with every pipe so the top of the bird's animation matches with the height of every pipe like this. You can also repeat this process with the bottom of the bird's animation and just add some more variance so that it's not coming down on the same position every single time. And now you should have your bird animating perfectly through all of your pipes like this. To finish off our entire composition, we're going to add one final touch and that's going to be on our background assets. I'm going to highlight the asset, go to Motion Tile in the Effect Controls panel, set a keyframe for Tile Center at the start of the timeline, move forward to about one second on the timeline, and move the background to the left a bit. Then I'll add a loopout expression on the tile center with the continue affix so that now it'll keep moving to the left for the whole composition. The goal here is to have the background moving from right to left slower than the pipes in the foreground to create a parallax effect. When something passes by you, the closer it is, the faster it goes past your vision. The farther away it is, the slower it goes past. Recreating that effect with the background and foreground layers creates a really nice effect. And after all that, we're done. We took a handful of assets off the internet, and using creative techniques, we made this awesome composition. That's it. You're welcome to download our free After Effects templates pack. That link will be below. Hit that subscribe button, and remember, always be creating.